Hi, I'm Jay with Plastic Kitchen, etc. And today we are in our latest kitchen remodel. So I wanna show you guys around. Starting off with the kitchen, we did a kitchen and a master bathroom. In the kitchen here, we kept the same layout. So they had an island here with seating on, on your side and we kept that same arrangement. Fridge stayed here, pantry stayed there. Everything pretty much stayed where it is. We just wanted to update the cabinets, the counters, the flooring, you know, everything, right? We went with a granite called tourmaline. A tourmaline granite. We did a uh, white undermount quartz sink. Now, you know, I love quartz sinks. They're really easy to keep clean. They're hard to stain, they're hard to scratch. They're really hard to chip. So they're a great product to have. We went with a 60-40 split on this sink. So that's basically one smaller sink and one bigger compartment, right, on the sink. This backsplash is actually one of my favorite backsplashes. It is now discontinued, unfortunately. So if you like this backsplash, don't ask me what it is. I am not gonna be able to get it for you. It has like a, a, a striping on the back. Now, the way that they make glass tiles is it's actually clear glass. They're about a quarter of an inch thick, and then they have a hand painted, what, however they make the design on the back, right? So this was like, hand painted, but then it had like a striation across the back. Came in six different colors, and I just think it has a really, really awesome look to it. So we got the last of it uh, that, that we could get. Again, the client did his own electrical work, so these pendant lights installed by him, and the black outlets installed by him as well. Now, I know a lot of folks will ask me about having plugs installed on the bottom of the cabinetry. That is one option. It does hide the plugs from view, but then what ends up happening is all your appliances have the cords coming up behind them. And so then when you look at your kitchen, you see all these plugs going up to the bottom of the cabinets. So back to the design, we went with a raised panel door. This is called the Palantina from Canyon Creek, and it is a raised panel painted door. Another design situation we always get into is do you want the door the drawer fronts to match the doors there's an option with cabinet manufacturers called drawer fronts to match so what that basically does is do you want your drawer front to look like this right a raised panel with the with the frame around it normally built in a five piece construction you know the panel is one piece and then the four sides right in this situation we went with a slab drawer front now with this particular manufacturer and this particular door style it they do copy the edge profile of the door. So that stays on the drawer. And what that does is just, you know, blend the whole thing in together. But if you had a, if you had a shaker door, then it's either gonna be a shaker cabinet, right? Or it's gonna be a flat panel drawer front. So in this situation, again, the one with the slab, and that's all that does is it makes the handles a little more pronounced. Stayed with the 30 inch appliances. So this is a 30 inch range and a 30 inch microwave. No exterior venting, still vents to the front. Let's talk about cabinet design for the island. So there's a couple different ways to finish off the sides of an island. You can do door panels, right? Uh, and we did door panels on the front of the island, which I'll show you in a sec. Or you can do finished end panels, right? So in this situation, we want the finished end panel. It, it has a cleaner space for an outlet, you know? Uh, all islands by code require an outlet on each side of the island, depending on the size of the island. But with this size of the island, for sure you need two, right? So you got you got one outlet on this side and you got one on the other side. And having it on a, you know, imagine if you had this as the door, you know, where are you gonna put the outlet, right? Uh, because the frame of the door is gonna hit the, the outlet. Another nice part about uh, island design is that you can do a base. Something that I really love about our island designs is the upgraded uh, base molding. You know, a lot of times you just have a panel that goes to the ground and then maybe you'd have some kind of a base shoe or something like that to cover up. You know, most folks are doing waterproof laminate, so you gotta pin it down on the edges, right? So uh, you would have a, like a base shoe or something like that on there. I would definitely recommend upgrading just your island. You don't have to do the perimeter cabinets because the base will be underneath the, the toe kick and you're, you know, you're not really gonna see it, right? But on an island, you can see how pronounced it is. It sticks out right in the middle of the room. So having the island wrapped with a base adds a really cool design touch to the island. You know, it just really makes the cabinets feel a lot, a lot fancier, a lot more upgraded. 
And this is what I was talking to you about with the uh, door panel. So this is another way to finish out uh, islands, especially somewhere where there are no cabinet doors, right? Now you could have storage here if you wanted to increase the island size. Uh, but if you don't want to increase the island size, then you just put false door fronts on the cabinet. If you are going to do that and you are going to do the base, then you've got to account for the height of the base when you order your door panels. Um, and then we have our standard seating overhang here, uh, which would be somewhere between 12 and 14 inches. I don't know exactly. <laughs> but it's, it's enough to seat. If you have over 14 inches, then you're going to have to have supports like corbels or posts or something like that. Under 14, you don't need it. Uh, although we do embed rebar in the subtop just to give it some extra strength, it's not necessary to add extra support if you're under 14 inches. And on the sink side, uh, as far as the cabinetry, we went with the sink base cabinet, you know, that just has a open space in there for the plumbing and one shelf at the bottom, and then a two shelf cabinet for the side cabinet. And then you got the dishwasher. Uh, I believe everything was in the exact location that it was before, but you can check for a photo. A lot of times when you have an island, especially with a sink, you always got to try to figure out what you're going to do with the plumbing. You know, if you don't have a sink in your island right now, you're going to have to vent it as well. So you want to find out from your local city. They'll have a diagram and show you how to vent it for your plumber. Client provided and installed his own flooring. This is a waterproof laminate. Yep, waterproof laminate, just like in the, in the bathroom. And again, you can see, like, I love the tones of the floor. It's got cool tones and warm tones in it. It's got some taupes in it. And we have our blacks and whites and our grays for our backsplash. A lot of cool tones there. So it's nice to have a little bit more of a warm, warm tone for the floor. In the bathroom space, we have a new cabinet. We went with a center, center drawer. Uh, these are actually three separate boxes. So we have one box with three drawers, and then we have the two sink uh, cabinets on both sides. This cabinet is called Yosemite from uh, Canyon Creek, and the finish is called Dune. So that's a really light, natural finish that we have on these cabinets. And then we also have a, uh, a glazing on these cabinets as well. So you can see in the little crevices here, we did an additional glazing in there. And this one is like a, like a light brown color glazing. The countertop is a granite countertop, uh, you know, with two sink cutouts, square sinks, we went with the standard four inch splash. And then on top of that, we put the uh, beveled glass mirror. Now this is a custom beveled glass mirror with a custom frame around it. So we can make them any size we want. So we made it exactly to match the space. For this design, we went with two overhead vanity lights, three bulbs each. Now in a space like this, you could get away with two bulbs uh, each, but the three bulb also works as well. As long as you have enough space in between the sink, um, the center of the sink, because you know, if you have a smaller sink cabinet, the sink is gonna get pushed to the side, right? The smaller the cabinet, the, sm the, the smaller the center line of the sink. Uh, and you wanna line up your sink and your faucet and your light. So as long as it all fits, then, uh, and you have a little bit of space like we have right there in between the wall and the vanity light, you're good. We have Axor faucets. The client provided the Axor faucets. Uh, I typically like to provide my own faucets, but you know, if a client really likes their faucets, then I let, uh, let them provide them. Uh, it's just hard to warranty, you know, if people provide their own faucets. And for the hardware, you can see we went with all pulls. You can do pulls or knobs, depending on, you know, your configuration. Sometimes you can do uh, pulls, I mean, knobs on the doors and leave pulls on the drawers, but it's up to you. And the client provided this, this wall mounted mirror here uh, and it's, uh, you know, got a two power and single. Um, so two power is like, you know, very close up. Whoa, too close, too close. And then it has a little light in there too. We had a lot of changes in the shower area. So this was a tub and shower and this had a full size window here on the tub side. What we did is closed off the window and made this more elongated window here. And then instead of having the tub, because they have a tub in their guest bathroom, you know, you really don't need two more than two tubs in the house unless you're a bath person and you really want a master tub because most folks use tubs for either uh, pets or small children. So if you don't have either one of those, then uh, you can utilize a tub shower space just to do a real big uh, gymnasium style shower, which is what we did here. We have a shower with a dry area. So uh, what's nice about that is, you know, you have, you're taking your shower, you can come out, you sit here, 
Uh, you can dry off, you can put on your slippers, your robe, you know, and um, it gives you a nice place to, to sit before you go in the shower and when you come outside of the shower. So uh, we call it a dry area. Uh, it is waterproof, this whole section. Uh, although you're not really gonna get a lot of water uh, outside of the shower space because we got a door here, you know. Um, but I have done showers where you don't have a door, where you just have this panel right here. This is all open, so you can do it, we can do it that way too. So you got a seating area outside the shower and you can see we have towels here and whatnot. We tiled all the way to the ceiling. This is a uh, 12 by 24 porcelain tile that looks like um, vein cut travertine. So that's a really cool look. As you can see in the shower, it looks really natural, but it is um, a porcelain tile and this is commercially rated porcelain tile. So you never have to worry about stains, cracks, things like that. I mean, commercially rated tiles are really strong. Design wise, we put a stripe inside the shower. Uh, this is about a six inch wide stripe going from floor to ceiling. I really like vertical stripes. You know, horizontal stripes used to be all the rage, you know, a decade, decade and a half ago. I think vertical stripes are the new thing. They, they look more modern, more fresh. So this is where the valves are for the shower. And then we ran them to a hand shower and a regular shower head. Transfer valve is built within this little fixture here. Switch from one fixture to another with this little guy right here. And then this turns on the, the shower, the water. It gives you the pressure and the heat. We did two niches in here. And when you do a niche, just think about what you're gonna put in there. Uh, if you have small items, you can do, you know, just a 15 inch a niche or a 14 inch niche. If you're gonna have tall things with maybe pump, uh, like a lot of Costco stuff has like a pump style thing, then you might want, you know, 16, 17, 18 inches. We also added a footrest niche. So this isn't just your normal footrest, you know, a footrest is normally, you know, 10, 14 inches tall. And it's so you can put your leg up and, and uh, makes shaving easier. Uh, in this situation, we did a footrest niche. So this takes the footrest out of the space, you know, so you can see your future floor is still clear in this area. And having a niche in the wall just makes it that much more convenient. Don't be afraid to put a seat or a footrest in your shower, even if it's a tight space, because really the only space you need is up here. You don't need a lot of leg space. Like you could tell if this was the shower area, this is how big it would feel. It would feel this big. It wouldn't feel like you're in a space that's only this size, even though you have the seat right here. And then of course we did the glass enclosure and with a door. And that's just kind of nice. It, it traps in a little more of, of the heat. If you have a, an open, or if we didn't have this panel here, you would feel a little bit more, you know, the ambient air that's that's running around your, your house. Trimmed out with a surface bullnose. Now there's a couple different ways to trim these out. I float all my showers, so all my showers are gonna be floated with mortar and made uh, with a hot mop shower pan. That's what we like to do. And then we lath and scratch and float and tile the walls. That is gonna add a little bit of more uh, structural support to the wall, but it also makes the walls a little bit thicker. So then you gotta trim out that thickness somehow. You know, you gotta cover the, the mortar bed in your thin set. So for that, we use a little trim piece. This manufacturer makes a nose piece already. So I think they come in like a three by 12, you just rip them down to whatever you need and put them on the wall and there you go. We set the tiles in a 50% staggered on this tile installation. So 50% staggered means that each tile is staggered from the other one by 50% by one half, all right? So the line of one is directly in the middle of the middle. One. And then we use the extra that we had, you know, you buy a whole slab for the countertop, right? We use the extra part for the seat top and the niche shelves, you see that there? The band in, the, in there is made up of natural stone and uh, different types of glass. We have some glass that has some kind of opalescence to it. And for this window, we went with a elongated window, and this is a picture window, so it does not open. And we went with an obscure glass, and you do have several choices in obscure glass. And the one we picked is called Delta Frost by Milgard. This is a Milgard window. Uh, white interior, white exterior, and then trimmed out with the surface bullnose for the, you know, the trim for the top. And don't let your uh, design, you know, just be tile and then paint the edge here. Please don't do that. Do like a, uh, like some kind of a trim piece, please. All right, I beg you. And for the floor, we went with a uh, waterproof laminate. It's got a wood texture to it and uh, in the more of the gray tones. It does have some, um, some light browns in there as well. 
So, you know, what's nice about this, we have the warm tone cabinets, you know, offset by the cool tone floors, which is nice. Uh, but this floor yeah, is a really nice combination of warm tones and cool tones. Just depends on your style, you know, if you want a little more reclaimed look like this look or a little more um, like hand sawn look, or if you want something that's really uniform, you know, they have them in all different shapes and sizes. That's the nice thing about getting something that is uh, man-made, you know, we can make it look however we want, right? So. There's a lot of options out there for you to find. Another little project we did in the middle of these two big projects is uh, rebuilding the fireplace mantle. So we had the red brick originally, which was painted white, and then we added a mantle on top. This is a uh, eight inch mantle with some trim here, two different kinds of trim. So we have uh, a molding at the top here and another smaller molding at the bottom. Just bricked before and um, now it's not. And that wraps up our latest kitchen and master bathroom remodel. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Hi, and I'm Jay. No, who am I? What am I doing? God, I just screwed that whole thing up. All right. Yeah. Or if you're a great chef and you never burn anything, I can't say I'm that chef. It gives a cleaner. <clears throat> if I could talk, cleaner. Um, and this is a uh, polished nickel. You got a question in the back? We also did a uh, a uh, step down here. Uh, this is a um, what do you call it? A um, it's a what is it? What do you, what do you, what do you all those things. I can't think of what they're called. Uh, you tip thing, you put your thing for shaving your guys. Yeah, uh, like a like a like a footstep, a footrest. That's what it's called. That's it. I know. Yeah, seems like it should be fancier, huh? Should have been something with the word like coagulate. Um. So now it's just a regular start over. Is that right? Opalescence? Is that a word? Uh, um, all right, let's shoot our outro. And that wraps up our late, nope, whatever. Oh, I'm supposed to pause. Aha, yes. <laughs>